Hi there, I'm Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review for your ears, talking about Fear Street, Part 2, 1978. This will be a fairly short review and spoiler-free until I get to the very end. At the very end, I want to talk about something that's going to happen in the next movie, but I don't want to talk about that until we get past the movie, because, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with one or the other. But anyway, I'm going to stay away from spoilers, and I'll keep this short. This is a highly entertaining second uh, of a trilogy that was a planned trilogy that was supposed to get a theatrical release, and it's incredibly well done like the first one. This would be more of a horror movie even than the first one. The first one had kind of a scream vibe with a hip soundtrack and some nice black comedy layered on top of some pretty horrific kills. This gets rid of the comedy, takes the music back to the 70s, and what I really, really like about it is it's book-ended by continuing the story from the first film. Not having any experience with the books, I have no idea if this is how the story plays out or anything like that. But I like the fact, because I wasn't done with the first movie, and knowing that the next two movies go back in time, and it's not a time travel story, um, I didn't want to lose the characters and the events that happened in the current one, because it's not finished. So, the events of this movie are told, not really in a flashback, but kind of, and they're bookended by what's really going on with where we left off last week. They nail the vibe. Um, they got the right actors. The biggest complaint I have about the, maybe the writing in both of the episodes, and this is probably how episodes, they're both theatrical length movies. The the bullies are about as bad a bully as you could possibly imagine. Like, if it really happened in real life, they'd be up on charges type of bullies. Um, and they get away with it. And I know, I was, I was short, red-haired, freckled, skinny. I got picked on quite a bit in school and, and bullied, yes, but not to the point of, I mean, some of these things in both episodes are like, wow, nobody called the cops? No, 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 we're, you know, we'll just, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh... That's about the biggest flaw. The only other thing is this one takes a little bit longer to get to the kills. Um, You've got the big thing at the beginning, and then there were some things that punctuated it. This kind of takes more of a classic slasher vibe to build up the characters and the situations till it just kind of... And then once you get the kills, we have more than the first movie, (laughs) really. And it does tie everything back together, and it doesn't end how you expect, and then we get a bookend back in, too. If you like the first one, watch this one, but know that this is the Godfather 2 of The Empire Strikes Back as far as tone. It's a darker film, less comedy, but still quite entertaining if you're a fan of old slasher movies. This is more the old slasher movie without the parody, the satire, the throwbacks, the callbacks, the whatever, the scream of it all. Um, but I really enjoyed it. it, just not quite as much because I kind of expected getting the the black humor on top of it, which is what made the first one so special to me. And So watch it if you've seen the first one. If you haven't seen either one, these, I read marketing, these are aimed at kids, a little older than Goosebumps age, and I find them quite fine. Yes, we're dealing with high school kids, so that's one thing. But other than that, when you're used to slasher movies, these are really no different, and they're really well made. Lee Janiak directed both of them. She hasn't done a whole lot. Um, her first movie was Honeymoon back in 2014. She's directed some pretty on some pretty big TV shows. I saw something when I was doing research for the first movie that she's married to one of the Duffer brothers, which kind of explained a little bit more (laughs) about where these movies are coming from. Uh, That's not listed on her IMDb and not listed in the Wikipedia. For this matter of fact, she doesn't have a Wikipedia listing. I thought she did. She doesn't now. Sadie Sink from uh, Stranger Things makes an appearance in here. And I don't mean to say that Fear Street's anything like Stranger Things. The first one kind of had a Stranger Things vibe because you had this 90s thing going on and it was very colorful and whatever. But this definitely has a Friday the 13th summer camp slasher feel. They nail it. Um, and, and there's not much comedy, if any, really, to break up uh, some pretty good tension. So it plays out pretty much as a straight-up horror movie, and I'm very excited to see where it's going. Now we're going to get into some 
minor spoilers just talking about the last movie. If you haven't watched a trailer for the last movie or know what's going to happen, you can tune out now and check out therockfile.com. I'll see you there. So at the very end, we get a little clip of what's going to happen in 1666. And we know from the first two movies that this is when everything happened to uh, 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 Miss Fear. And we're, we've gotten flashes of the backstory and and I, I was kind of fine with that. I don't need to t- have a whole movie in, in 1666. But then when we saw an actual trailer, actually a clip of it, it's got a very much The Witch vibe, like very realistic setting, very rustic. And I was all in. And then they started showing some of the modern characters from the first movie in 1666. Now, when we first see a glimpse of 1666 uh, in, in the second movie, the character finds herself in that time but when she looks in the water she sees uh the witch so that explains why we might be seeing characters from the first movie or the second movie for that matter in the third movie even though it takes place but there's scenes with like major characters from the first movie acting uh in 1666 and I don't know if this is going to be dream sequences, remembrances. It'll be interesting. And that that's kind of just what I wanted to bring up. That I'm, I'm confused why they would do that. Unless it is them kind of inhabiting the bodies of, and maybe that's what it is. We get to see the origin of everything through their eyes, through the character's eyes. And then we wrap everything up. Because we still have quite a bit to do in modern times. And I feel that's going to be a big part of the third movie as well. So what did you think about him? I'd love to hear about it. I just think these were a surprise. I expected nothing out of the first one when I watched it. I really enjoyed it. And I certainly didn't expect this one to be more uh, on the horror end than the black comedy end. I was you know, impressed in that route. Would have enjoyed the comedy, though. But that it wasn't there made it a lean, mean kind of machine there. And when you got to the killings, man, if you want to see an axe to the face, how about multiple times? It's there. I'm Scott Hamilton. The Rockfile.com is my website. Please like, share, subscribe, and thank you very much for checking this out. Mm-hmm.